and now call Hamilton my home. But today, I'm really excited to be here to help host the Access and Care Indigenous Knowledges and Archival Practices Symposium. This symposium represents over a year of building relationships and sharing knowledges across our three partners, the Deo Pahage Indigenous Knowledge Centre at Six Nations Polytechnic, the Archives Association of Ontario, and the Archives of Ontario. Before turning the microphone over, I have a few housekeeping items to share. If you are tweeting, we have a hashtag. Please use AccessCare2019. I would also like to invite all participants to join the Decolonizing Description Listserv. Instructions for how to join will be available at the registration desk on site or emailed out to all participants after this event. And a thank you to Anna St. Ange, Desmond Wong, Trina Grover, Stacy Allison Casson, and Joy Kirshner, who managed this listserv and have allowed us to promote it today. I'd also like to invite all participants um, to remember that today's events are being recorded and will be live streamed. You'll see our camera over here in the corner. We expect to have more than 200 folks joining us through our Adobe Connect platform and we'll give opportunities for these friends to uh, virtually participate through our chat function. Recordings will be made available as soon as we are able to um, post them after the close of the symposium. So stay tuned for how to access these recordings after. For our virtual participants, please note that Adobe may offer a multitude of technological quirks. And we will attempt to monitor these throughout the day. There is one quirk that we already know about. Uh, Adobe doesn't automatically toggle between presentation slides and our video feed. So when we switch from slide to video, you'll need to exit the full screen and then open the video feed in full screen mode. For those of you joining us here in person, note that we do have washrooms available out the door to your left. Uh, if you are using the accessible washroom, please remember to press the red lock button to avoid any surprises. We will also be sharing some delicious food today and hope that you will enjoy eating together. If you are looking for additional amenities or food, we're conveniently located next to York Lanes, which has coffee, restaurants, and shops. To get there, you exit our front door, turn right, and right again. I would also like to introduce Faith Chapu, who will be joining us for the day. Faith is a trauma-informed counselor and a registered social worker. Faith's experience is rooted in community, education, and health-related settings, providing frontline support to Indigenous and LGBTQ2S adults, families, children, and adolescents. Faith is available throughout the day for anyone who feels they need extra support, and we've made space in our client lounge next door or in the reading room to meet with Faith. Please note that she's our only counselor here today. If she's occupied, you can check in with Richard, who's at the back, and he'll keep a list of people who would like to speak with Faith. A final housekeeping note. Unfortunately, Brenda McDougall is not available to meet with us this afternoon. This will give us a little bit of extra time, and so we've elected to end a bit earlier at four o'clock today. Now, before we hear opening remarks from our three partners, I'd like to welcome Derek Sandy, who will be our opening ceremony today. Derek is a research assistant at the Deo Hahage Indigenous Knowledge Center at Six Nations Polytechnic. He is a member of the Gayokono Cayuga Nation and of the Ote Yauni Wolf Clan. Derek participates in presentations and workshops that center Cayuga history, stories, and traditions. Derek? Let's greetings to you all, or y'all. Thank you for having me today in this venue. I'll just start. Um, 
very familiar with the Six Nations community. Yeah, but uh, today I'm going to be uh, presenting Gunahanya, um, or the Thanksgiving address in the Kiva language. So this is Ganahanyu. We begin all our meetings, all our ceremonies, all of our um, gathering, social gatherings. This begins with this. Um, it tells of how we relate to the universe. Uh, everything has a, a spirit, a soul in it. And we just acknowledge that uh, 
according to the creation story, when the creator was first making things on earth, and he decided to make people, he said that they would, um, he was going to create things on here so that the people had things to look after themselves and help look after the earth. So this is how we relate to that. Um, we, the easiest way to do it is if, if the window was open and you could see the earth, and you just, you just close your eyes, you, just, you always start at the earth, and then you go up the grasses, the berries, the animals, the trees, even, and also the wind. And then we also have to get up into the, uh, into the sky world, the thunderers, the sun and the moon. And how we relate to them is uh, grandparents, and the sun we relate to is uh, our older brother. And then finally, we acknowledge uh, his name was Spenibayo or Handsome Lake. We acknowledge him uh, a few hundred years ago. He brought peace to our people again. And also, we acknowledge the four beings that take care of us and care of him. And then finally, at the end, we acknowledge the Creator for that we are well here on Earth. So uh, that's the whole. Explanation. Well, minimize explanation. Uh, Ganohanyo can be done. The longest I heard was two hours. Uh, this depends on each speaker and what they want to talk about. And then there's a series of books along with that. And I guess that's it. Great panel. Thank you, Derek, for, uh, for that greeting and for setting the tone for the day. I think it's, it's important if we're talking about Indigenous knowledges to also acknowledge the importance of Indigenous languages. And uh, that's uh, certainly been set by your, uh, your contribution there, so thank you. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome you all here. My name's John Roberts. I'm the provincial archivist here in Ontario. Uh, I grew up as a settler in New Zealand uh, in territory governed by Te Tiri Te Waitangi. Um, a different relationship between settler and indigenous, but, uh, but something that has certainly shaped me and uh, helped me understand just the importance of the conversations that we're having today. So one of the best parts of my job as provincial archivist is being able to welcome people to our facilities for really important events. And it really is a pleasure to, to welcome you all here today for, for what is an important conversation. Um, it's great to look out and see not just some familiar faces in the audience, but a bunch of new faces. And I know that the organizing committee worked really hard to make sure that we weren't just the same group of Toronto-based settler institutions talking to each other uh, when we have this, this discussion today. So it's it's a real pleasure to see some diversity in the audience, to see new, new faces, and to people for whom this is your first visit to the archives of Ontario, a particularly warm welcome and we hope it's not the last time that we, uh, we have the, the chance to see you and talk to you here uh, in Africaland. I'd also uh, like to bring greetings from uh, Deputy Minister, Deputy Karen Hughes, the, the head of the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services, who has been really excited uh, at the partnership that we've organized uh, today to, to bring this event together. So uh, just like to, to convey uh, the, the, the welcome also from, from Deputy Hughes. As the provincial archives and the, the second largest archives in Canada, we seek to engage with Ontarians around a particular type of documentary history that we have the, the privilege to be, be stewards of. And yet at the same time, we're also deeply aware that the story of the past, the story of this land, takes many, many forms. And many of those stories predate the stories in the records that we hold here in this building. Stories of this country, this people, cannot be told solely based on the records that we have the privilege of preserving. For example, did you know that only about a kilometre and a half from, uh, from where we are meeting today is the site of a large historic huron Wendat village? It was the home of a thriving community that lived along the humble watershed around 600 years ago. And that's over 100 years before the earliest record that we have, have in our care. So I'd like us all just to stop and, and think and remember about the sort of stories told by 
the existence of these communities and remind ourselves that the stories we seek to preserve are far more than just the stories in our specific archival collections. I'd particularly like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting today, certainly for those here in the room. For those of you joining by webcast, think of the land that you're standing on. Here in North York, this is the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit. It's been the subject of many agreements to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes, including the District 1 Spoon Wampum Belt, the covenant between the uh, Iroquois Confederacy and the Confederacy Ojibwe, and Treaty 13, that you may also know as the Toronto Purchase. So I'd particularly like to acknowledge the lives and traditions of the indigenous peoples who have lived on, cared for this land, and continue to, to care for it uh, and think about its stewardship into the future. And to think about how the stories that are associated with that connection with land, that stewardship of resources, the, the environment that Derek spoke to, are part of a, a broader story, one that's been carried in these communities for many thousands of years, stories that are deeply rooted to the land. Stories don't live in records, stories live in a context, an environment. And let's remember that. But it's also important when we're, we're thinking about these connections to acknowledge how they work in relation to the day-to-day -day activities that we carry out. Here at the Archives of Ontario, we're committed to creating space for Indigenous voices within our institutional practices. Today's symposium is part of that, but far from all of it. We're committed to working with various Indigenous communities and Indigenous partners to ensure their stories are represented in our exhibits, in our educational programming. Uh, it was great to have the Six Nations Polytechnic as a partner on our Animalia exhibit next door. And for those of you who are new to the, uh, uh, the institution, please, please go and have a look at that. We're also working currently with the Mushkegawak Council to revise our online exhibition around the, the James Bay Treaty and making sure that their story of that uh, interaction of that treaty is part of the set of stories that are presented. And committed to working with indigenous communities to identify, redescribe, represent, re-represent records in our collections so that our view, the government view, the, the institutional view is not the only way that those uh, records are, are described, not the only context in which they're portrayed. We're looking in the mirror to re-examine our practices and processes to represent the complexity, the diversity, the challenge that is our shared story. All of this work requires significant self-reflection, determination, and a willingness to change. And we recognize that it's our responsibility as a major institution to take on the work of meeting each of those commitments, to acknowledge the land that we're meeting, meeting on today in a meaningful way, and not just with some pro forma text, but to actually stop and think, what does it mean to be acknowledging the traditional owners of the land? and acknowledging the path forward, which we're exploring collectively. I'd like to thank a few people who've made this event possible. Certainly all of the speakers, uh, all of the, the participants who are, are making the conversation possible today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving up your time for, for sharing your experiences uh, with us. I'm so delighted that we don't have Archives of Ontario people up here on the stage today. It's one of, the, one of the writing instructions, I think, to the group was that this should not be the Archives of Ontario preaching to people. We are here to listen and participate. This is not us to, uh, to promote. So thank you to everyone who is, is sharing of their experiences, of their, their aspirations, their frustrations, whatever stories it is that you're bringing today. Thank you particularly to the, the partners that have been involved in this, this exercise. While we are meeting here today on... The, in the rooms of the, the Archives of Ontario. This is not purely an Archives of Ontario event and would not have been possible in any meaningful way without the, the deep participation of the Indigenous Knowledge Centre from the Six Nations Polytechnic uh, and the Archives Association of Ontario. So thank you there. And also thank you to the Toronto Area Archives Group, the, the, the TAG folk, for their sponsorship uh, of some of the refreshments. Um, I'd like to thank 
the staff from my institution who have made this, uh, this event possible. And I know it goes against all good practice to call out any one individual, but I would like to specifically acknowledge Catherine Falls for her leadership in, in getting the event to this point. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people who have been working with you, Catherine, but uh, your leadership has been, uh, uh, has been great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Typically humble. <laughs> um, and of course, I'd like to thank all of the attendees who have come. The uh, event was a sellout, and beyond the people here in the room, uh, as you heard from Rebecca, we've got uh, around 200 people participating by webcast. So, indication of the huge interest that there is in, in understanding and sharing experiences around, around the issues on the agenda today. Because these conversations are important, and I'm mindful that while we're here in Toronto discussing Indigenous knowledge and archival practice, um, at the same time in Adelaide, Australia, the Conference of the International Council on Archives is meeting. And one of the main themes in their annual conference of the international archive community is also Indigenous issues. And there are Canadians involved in that conversation uh, sharing the same sort of stories that I think we're going to be discussing today. So we are not alone in this room or on this, uh, this webcast in thinking about these issues. It is an international discourse. It's an international challenge. So we are part of something that is really important in thinking around how do indigenous knowledges and archival practices support each other. So in closing, I'd just like to say again, Thank you all, the people who've made this possible. Thank you, the people who are going to participate in it. Thank you all for the opportunity for me and my institution to learn, to listen, to, to participate. Uh, we're certainly looking forward to it as part of our journey as we equip ourselves to, to really step up to those, those commitments to partnership that I mentioned earlier on. We're delighted to be welcoming you here on this, uh, in this room uh, to be acknowledging all the other interests uh, in this land beyond just uh, our facility and looking forward to what I think is going to be a hugely uh, enjoyable, stimulating and hopefully at times challenging day ahead. Thank you again. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jennifer Grant, and I am the Vice President of the Archives Association of Ontario. I'm very pleased to be here today on behalf of the Association's Board of Directors and Volunteers to welcome you to the Access and Care Indigenous Knowledges and Archival Practice Symposium. The AAO, as represented by our President, James Roussain, has had the pleasure of working with the team from the Deohahage Indigenous Knowledge Center at Six Nations Polytechnic. We would like to thank um, Tannis Hill and Sarah General in particular for their guidance and their leadership uh, in the creation of today's exciting program. We would also like to thank the Toronto Area Archivist Group, which is the ch chapter of the AAO, for their generous sponsorship of today's events. Uh, finally, the AAO would like to offer a sin sincere thank you to the organizing committee at the Archives of Ontario um, for their vision and their tireless effort to make today's event a reality. And we would like to highlight in particular, sorry Catherine, the work of Catherine Falls and Alison Little. Uh, thank you both for your unwavering commitment and time to this event. The Archives Association of Ontario is proud to support all the communities that make Ontario their home. Thank you, and enjoy the symposium. Skeras for Guego, Sego Seva Guego, and that you need to know that you can get that no get out there. Six Nations Polytechnic, Marge, Scano, the Ohahage Indigenous Knowledge Center. I'm so happy to be here today and so happy that um, 
We are able to work with such wonderful partners, Catherine, Allison, um, Richard, Rebecca. There were so many people that helped us bring this event together. I'm going to be chatting a little bit later about some of the work of the Deo Hahage Indigenous Knowledge Center. So I thought I would begin by just sharing a brief little bit about Six Nations Polytechnic. So Six Nations Polytechnic is an Indigenous institute that offers a range of programming, um, post-secondary um, college programming, um, continuing education programming. And it was founded by um, community members and um, cultural leaders uh, 25 years ago, but the discussions around education have been happening at Six Nations for a very long time. And the reason, of course, is because our relationship has not always been so good. And um, I think some people would say we are still really trying to navigate that path back to a place of peace. And as Derek mentioned um, in, his, in his opening remarks today, our people are very committed to peace. And we have a great tradition of our stories telling us that um, peace and Ganikuyo and, and the good mind are things that we should be striving for in our relationships with, with all of the world, human and non-human beings, and certainly with each other. And in these modern incarnations of relationships that we have now, organization to organization. So Six Nations um, Polytechnic was founded kind of in response to wanting to make sure that our culture, our languages would be transmitted to next generations. And I feel like it's an organization that's committed to education, but it's an organization that's committed and responsive to our community arts itself. And I feel like that commitment to community is something that um, really also helped Deo Hahage to flourish. It is not an archive only for Six Nations Polytechnic students. It is an archive for community members and researchers and um, learners of all kinds who are finding and the, the path that I think of finding and getting excited by our knowledges um, can happen anywhere. It can happen because you go into the Animalia exhibit and you see some of the stories that um, Heather Bomberry and Shelby Bomberry from the uh, Six Nations Polytechnic worked on. And it can kind of set you on a path because one of the most exciting things about, about our stories and about our knowledges is that they're they're connected to so many things. One thing can lead you to another thing, can lead you to another thing, can lead you to another thing. And this can happen purely just through relationships and talks with elders and community leaders and language speakers, but it can also happen through the written records and through kind of unpacking and, and um, um, enriching the stories that we know about um, our histories and our, our people. So it's very, very exciting to be here. I'm really looking forward to hearing from, from everybody. And I'm excited to see a lot of the people in the room as you saw. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> so um, yeah, well, and please enjoy your day. One of the things I'm looking forward to the most today is food and breaks and talking. So we're going to take a short break right now and regroup at about 10.30, which gives us a good amount of time to get to know each other, meet your neighbor, and enjoy some carbohydrates. <laughs> so please, 